This is Jeff Weiss with the last lesson in this course for Unit 15. Uh, the topic is horticultural specialties and careers, uh, both traditional and emerging op opportunities in the field. Um, before we get started, though, I'd like to kind of recap the schedule for the rest of the course. Uh, we've got Unit 15. Uh, and the discussion for this week is optional. However, Unit 15 also has a place for you to post your uh, presentations. And I hope that you'll get them in um, by December 11th so that we can uh, look at them and uh, post responses. Um, and then uh, the following week, your projects, your final projects are due to be submitted via Dropbox and final exam on also on the 18th. So um, everything is due for grade uh, for the class by December 21st and I hope uh, that you'll let me know if for some extreme reason uh, you need additional time. But uh, we've had all semester now to work on the presentations and projects so I hope uh, um, those will be um, not stress you out too much during the busy month of December. So the learning objectives for this week are to be able to describe how horticulture is connected to healthy eating and lifestyle choices, um, to discuss the basic elements of the programs at CLC, and to be able to um, you know recognize some emerging areas of opportunity and horticultural related fields. Uh, key terms and concepts are listed below and I've also included some links to these other uh, new green industries that are emerging in the areas of uh, biomass production, uh, algae, and uh, fungiculture. Uh, in particular I urge you to take a, a, a peek at the uh, uh, TED talk on uh, six ways mushrooms can save the world. So CLC has, um, for a two-year college, an amazing uh, program. Uh, and um, you're probably well aware of the uh, courses and the opportunities at CLC. But um, we have both certificates and um, uh, associate degree programs in some of the traditional horticulture areas, including uh, um, landscape, I'm sorry, including uh, greenhouse and nursery production, uh, landscape design and maintenance, uh, floriculture and floral design. And as some of you have already noted in your assignments, we have an amazing uh, resource nearby at the Chicago Botanic Garden, uh, which has their own uh, uh, courses and many opportunities uh, to get involved through um, uh, volunteering and uh, occasional uh, 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 job postings uh, that might be of interest to our um, our students. Then there's the additional programs that are um, innovative and available from very, very few other uh, schools in the state. And that includes the Natural Areas Management course, which I have a certificate in from CLC, our boriculture, and uh, Gina's, Gianna's Fazoli's uh, Sustainable Agriculture Program. Uh, and there's um, lots of exciting opportunities and, and course offerings in these areas. So um, just to recap, um, there's uh, associate track and certificate programs, and then uh, additional um, certificate options um, available through CLC and the Ivy Covered um, um, uh, Horticulture Building. Um, and just another uh, word on the Sustainable uh, Agriculture Program. Uh, this has uh, many connections to um, a theme that um, talked about in the last couple of weeks uh, about uh, food availability, urban agriculture, uh, organic farming, uh, food access, and uh, just this whole uh, notion of sustainability that is uh, 
making its way into our um, vocabulary and way of, ways of thinking about uh, some of the environmental um, problems that we're facing. Then my own particular favorite <coughs> pardon me, is uh, natural areas management, parks, and public lands, uh, but also uh, more of um, use of sustainable practices and uh, native plants are coming into subdivisions, golf courses, uh, watersheds, and um, utility highway corridors and easements where these same uh, concepts um, can be uh, applied to uh, reduce u um, resource utilization and to preserve and increase biodiversity. And then the related area of, uh, of sustainable and energy efficient landscapes is um, increasingly coming into play. Uh, the uh, groups such as Mila and uh, landscapers are reducing their inputs of chemicals and water using native plants, increasing use of permeable pavement and rain gardens to reduce runoff and flooding, and some areas where our uh, public policy and ordinances can be adapted um, uh, to support these uh, these practices. So many of the communities are um, uh, developing um, uh, strategies for reducing runoff through use of green infrastructure, uh, banning uh, phosphorus in um, fertilizers and uh, uh, detergents, uh, especially uh, dishwashing detergents, and then uh, implementing tree preservation ordinances and uh, uh, strategies for dealing with uh, issues such as uh, emerald ash borer. Uh, another area that we haven't really talked about is uh, horticultural therapy. Uh, this is uh, using the uh, demonstrated benefits of uh, horticulture uh, to help special populations um, relax, um, reduce stress, uh, enjoy um, the uh, exposure and connection to the land and plants. And uh, there's a lot of uh, emphasis now being placed on um, nature deficit and getting uh, young people out into nature and exposed to um, gardens and horticulture and uh, the idea of giving uh, universal access to um, uh, populations with special needs uh, is another area where um, uh, landscapes are being uh, modified and improved to provide uh, uh, access for uh, disabled folks. Uh, next topic is this uh, very broad idea of uh, green industry um, using energy efficient landscapes to reduce energy consumption and to create green roofs and rooftop gardens for um, um, improved um, carbon sequestration and um, air quality, and then uh, using sustainable landscapes uh, uh, throughout urban areas. So some new emerging green opportunities involve using uh, plants for um, filtering uh, actually the um, stormwater or the uh, sewer water agency the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District of Greater Chicago is now using um, tertiary um, filtration of water and the best way to do this is to run um, uh, water after uh, sewer water after it's been uh, cleaned uh, through plants to filter out the remaining uh, uh, impurities. In addition, uh, uh, 
plants are being used for uh, removal of toxic chemicals uh, uh, and uh, there's a lot of uh, areas where soil used to have to be dug up and landfilled and now the, the same land is being cleaned by uh, plants that can send their roots in, remove, take up and remove the um, harmful chemicals and then it's just the plant matter that needs to be uh, dealt with and not uh, uh, the soil that was previously polluted. Uh, another green opportunity is the use of biochar. Uh, this is uh, charcoal that is incorporated into the soil um, and in many places this is uh, uh, dramatically improving uh, the health of soil and agricultural production. Uh, this idea was was taken from areas in the um, in South America where the prehistoric people used this practice uh, and developed uh, extremely uh, fertile and productive uh, land. So um, this is an old idea that's been uh, rediscovered and is being uh, developed and there's a, a website uh, link that I gave you earlier if you're interested in learning more about this topic. Uh, use of algae. Um, algae is uh, a pretty amazing uh, plant uh, that grows at uh, an extremely rapid pace in polluted water and has amazing properties for soaking up carbon dioxide. So um, uh, it's been used to clean up uh, runoff from manure and it's being explored as one promising solution for um, reducing the amount of atmospheric carbon dioxide. Uh, I'm not sure anybody's come up with a um, an application that's going to make a uh, significant dent in the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, but it is one of the promising ideas that's being investigated for reducing uh, carbon dioxide and uh, the effects of global climate change. And then finally, uh, fungus. Uh, again, I, I would mention this uh, uh, TED Talk uh, called Six Ways That Mushrooms Can Save the World, and in a, just a few uh, minutes uh, Paul Stamets talks about uh, um, the potential for uh, various uh, types of fungus to reduce pollution, um, help in habitat restoration, uh, sequester carbon dioxide, uh, provide new medicines for flu, herpes, etc., uh, increase the um, efficient, low-cost production of biofuels, and to develop new, um, uh, less toxic uh, insecticides. So at uh, 2,200 2, acres, uh, perhaps a fungus is the largest organism on the earth. This one uh, fungus occupies uh, a vast area of land and probably has more uh, biomass than the largest redwood tree or the largest uh, uh, clone of aspen trees. So um, new ways of thinking about uh, uh, not just plants but some of these other organisms uh, including fungus that are exciting and have uh, game-changing possibilities for, uh, uh, for new uh, applications. So that's all I have to say after 16 weeks uh, I just want to close uh, by thank you for by thanking you for taking this class and for doing such a great job. I really, really enjoyed the discussions and seeing your uh, your assignments and work through the semester. Uh, an online class is not an easy uh, way to um, take a college level class, and I really appreciate the way that you persevered and uh, uh, worked hard to. Um, uh, accomplish the goals of this class. So I hope that you will stay in touch even though I haven't met most of you in person I feel like I know you and I hope the same is true for me. Uh, so uh, I'm giving you here my personal email address and my uh, cell phone number. I hope you'll stay in touch and let me know how you're doing. 
And I also wish you well and hope that you've give, been given some ideas and encouragement here to pursue your passion in horticulture. Uh, many of you are already involved in uh, uh, related fields. And I wish you well and hope that you'll continue to uh, make our planet a little more green and healthy. So um, that's all for this class. Uh, good luck. Uh, let me know if you need uh, support or uh, a couple of extra days to complete your work for the class.